Are you going to trust God? Or are you going to lean on some other power? Ahab, uh, he, he marries unwisely. He marries Jezebel. She is the daughter of the king of Sidon. We just came from the coast. That's where Sidon is. And so the king of Israel marries a pagan woman who brings with her the way of the Sidonians. And so obviously now we have this mixed Baal marriage that's going on. And I'm going to read to you 18, verse 17. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have and your father's house, because you've abandoned the commandments of the Lord, and you have followed the Baals. Now therefore send and gather all Israel to me at Mount Carmel, and 450 prophets of Baal, 450 prophets of the Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent to all the people of Israel, and they gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel, and Elijah came near to all the people and said, here's what he says, here's his challenge. How long Will you go limping between two different opinions? When are you going to choose? When are you going to make the right choice? If the Lord is God, then follow him. If it is Baal or Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word because they're kind of stuck now. Uh, they've been challenged. Uh, then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left of, the, of a prophet of the Lord, which is not really true, but that's how he was feeling at the moment. Uh, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let two bulls be given to us. Let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, lay it on the wood, put no fire to it, and I will prepare the other bull, lay it on the wood, and put no fire to it. You call upon the name of your God, I will call upon the name of the Lord, and the God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people answered, it is well spoken. They said, okay, we like this plan. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose for yourselves one bull, prepare it first, for you are many. Call upon the name of your God, put fire, no fire to it. And they took the bull, they were given to them, they prepared it, called upon the name of Baal from morning till noon. Oh, Baal, answer us. So up here, you could probably hear them, I mean, that 450 people crying out. Uh, sounded like just some sort of Pentecostal revival, you know, just, oh, Baal, answer us, answer us. And they took the bull, uh, and But there was no voice, and no one answered, and they limped around the altar that they had made. And at noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, cry aloud. He's a, he's a god. Uh, he, either he is musing, or he is relieving himself, or he's on a journey, or maybe he's asleep, and he must be awakened. Yell louder. You guys aren't yelling loud enough. And they cried aloud, cut themselves. So if you really want to get the attention of the gods, you cut yourself. So now they're a bloody mess and they're screaming and, and they cut themselves with swords and blood gushes out of them. And at midday, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation, but there's no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. And then Elijah said to the people, okay, come here, come here, come near to me. And all the people came near to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob to whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord and he made a trench around the altar as great as would contain two seahs of seed. And he put the, I don't know how much that is, and put the wood in order and cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, do it a second time. They did it a second time, do it a third time. They did it a third time. And the water ran around the altar and filled the trench. He didn't scream, he didn't yell. He just says, oh Lord, God of Abraham, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God, Yahweh, he is God. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they seized them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon. And we'll see the Kishon brook when we go down from here. And they slaughtered them there. Now, that's how the story goes. It's a high moment 
for Elijah, he's calling the people back to their one true God. Make a decision. Are you going to choose the one true God or are you going to worship these Baal gods because they worship the Baal gods because they needed rain? And, and they were the, the god of rain, and so, they would, and so they would hedge their bets, as we often do. Well, I trust God, but I also am going to do this, 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 and this just to make sure. And then, sad story about Elijah is, after this, he comes down, there's rain that comes upon, and it says, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he gathered up his garment, and he ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Jezreel's where Ahab's palace, that's the Jezreel Valley. We're going to go up on the roof, you just look into the Valley of Armageddon, it's right here. But he runs down to Jezreel, and it says he actually outran Ahab, who was in a chariot, and Elijah beat him by foot. Now, if you look around here, I don't think it's hard to understand why it'd be easier to get down by foot than it would by chariot. A little tough terrain here by chariot. Elijah gets to Jezreel thinking they're going to have a parade in his honor because he's called the people back to God. And, 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 and he's defeated the prophets of Baal. And when he gets to Jezreel, he goes in the post office and there's his picture already on the wall. He's a wanted man. Jezebel now wants his head because he has killed her prophets. And so in despair, uh, just think about that. He's defeated 850 prophets up here in the mountain, but one woman he can't take on. So he runs from her and he runs way, way south down uh, in Israel. And he goes into a cave, if you remember the story. And he goes into a cave and there the Lord meets him, not in a earthquake and not in a rushing wind, but in a still small voice. You remember that? And the message of that story is, after a great victory, oftentimes you come through a great valley in your life. But when he goes into that cave, never forget, no matter where you are, God got there ahead of you. And so God was already there ahead of Elijah. And I don't know if this is true, but that's about the end of Elijah's ministry. He passes the mantle to Elisha. But his big moment was up here, somewhere right around here on the horn of Mount Carmel. And this is, again, the place where God says to us again through the word. He's constantly saying to us, who do you trust? Who do you believe in? What are you going to build your life on? Are you going to trust you? If you don't trust God, where else are you going to turn? And the history of Israel is always, you know, looking around and saying, maybe we'll trust the Egyptians. Maybe we'll trust the Assyrians. Maybe we'll ally ourselves with the prophets of Baal. Maybe there's someone else, that, because they were, they were always outnumbered. They're still outnumbered today. And so the, the question is, who do you trust? 